why it is that someone else's touch makes us burst out laughing but when we try to tickle ourselves nothing happens right it turns out that our brain plays a trick on us and it's all about survival control and prediction today we're diving into interesting neuroscience about why we cannot tickle ourselves we will learn about the clever tricks that our brain plays on us and then also we're going to learn how we can bypass it what are the implications of this very interesting phenomenon for our mental health technology and also everyday awareness so stay around and you might see if you are able to change how you actually perceive your mind <laughs> So first of all, why tickling even exists? Scientists believe that it is an evolutionary defense mechanism, a way to train our body to react to unexpected touches, like for instance, back crawling on our skin. And this is why as well, the most ticklish spots such as feet and underarms are the most vulnerable. But here is the catch. Our brain can find tickling funny only when it's unpredictable. So that's why our friends or family can tickle us and then we can laugh as a result of that. But if we try to tickle ourselves, nothing happens. In a famous study in 2000, neuroscientists Blake Moore, Wolpert and Frith, they discovered something really interesting. Our brain has a sensory cancellation system and this is how it works. So first of all, when we move a hand to tickle ourselves, our cerebellum, the brain's prediction machine, sends a signal ahead of time saying, this touch is coming for you, so ignore it. Secondly, this reduces the sensory response in our somatosensory cortex, the touch processing area. And then thirdly, when someone else is at tickling us the touch is unpredictable so our brain cannot cancel it out and that's why we can laugh in a way we can say that our brain it is a spoil sport that ruins our own fun okay so let's think now about what if we could actually hack our brain system so scientists they found actually two different ways of how we could hack our brain in order to tickle ourselves so the first one it is the robot delay trick and if we use a machine that delays our self-touch by a fraction of a second, our brain cannot predict it perfectly. And then because of that, we can tickle ourselves. And then the second experiment is the mirror illusion. So if we hide our real hand and watch in a mirror reflection of a fake hand, so it could be like a dummy hand or prosthetic arm being tickled, our brain gets fooled into thinking it's not us and then we can actually feel the tickling and i'm gonna leave references for both experiments so if you want you can go and read more about it so now you might think why i'm giving you this information it's not that you're gonna go and get the prosthetic arm to perform this experiment in front of your mirror right but what is really crucial that we learn from those experiments is that the tickling isn't really about the touch but it is more about our brain's ability to predict and the brain's expectations the real magic of this research isn't only about understanding why we cannot tickle ourselves but it is in understanding of our consciousness and our perception now let's have a look at three ways how this research can impact medicine science and even technology One of the most fascinating applications of this research is in understanding schizophrenia. So normally our brain tags our own actions like speaking or moving with a kind of self-label. And this is why we don't confuse our inner voice with someone else's. But in schizophrenia, this system can malfunction. And studies show us that some patients can tickle themselves because their brains fail to predict and cancel out their own movements. And this same glitch might explain why some people with schizophrenia hear voices, so their brain misunderstands their own thoughts as coming from an outside source. And this is why research such this one 
where we cannot take care of ourselves can be helpful when we're thinking about developing new diagnostic tools and even therapies to deal with certain mental health conditions. Have you ever used a VR headset and then you felt like you were inside the game? Or have you ever wondered how the prosthetic limb can actually feel natural? The answer lies in the same prediction system that stops you from tickling ourselves. Engineers now use this principle to reduce motion sickness in VR by syncing our movements perfectly with what we see. Engineers also can improve the prosthetic limbs by adding tiny delays of finely tuning sensory feedback to mimic unpredictable touch, tricking the brain into feeling ownership of the artificial limb. And also imagine that in the future, the robot surgeons, they could feel the tissue they are cutting as if their own hands were guiding the scalpel, making the complex procedures much more safer and precise. Imagine that maybe in the future, because of this really funny neuroscience research about why we cannot tickle ourselves might actually lead scientists to develop technology where we're going to be able to touch virtual objects. And there is something even more interesting. So we are actually experiencing the sensory cancellation every day without even realizing about it. When we brush our hair, when we pull the hair ourselves, our brain turns down that sensation because it is predictable. But once we're going to start focusing mindfully on our brushing, then we suddenly start feeling all the pulls, all the sensation. And this is because here we're breaking consciously that prediction loop. Many people who struggle with severe mental health issues, they might have this sensation of being disconnected from their body. And it might get to the extent where, for instance, someone might cut their finger and only when they see the blood, this is only when they will realize that they injured themselves. So simply guiding someone to deliberately, consciously touch the parts of the body can actually help them with connecting back with the body. It is like our brain suddenly registers a novel sensation. It's not a self-generated one. And this is why mindfulness meditation works, because it forces our brain to stop filtering out those boring signals, rewriting our awareness. So next time when you feel stressed, for instance, you can touch your hand or you can maybe hug yourself you have to do it slowly and with that conscious awareness and in this way your brain will register it as an outside touch because here you're hacking that tickle effect it is actually quite incredible how much we've learned from this really funny research about why we cannot tickle ourselves but this is a reminder that even the most quirkiest question in science can lead to the life-changing discoveries if you found this video fascinating, then please like it, share it, and I'm going to see you in the next one. And thank you. Bye-bye.